hates me to say it because I love the V8 Cruiser. This could be the reason why the V8 dinosaurs are gonna go extinct. As you're already aware, I bought the new 2.8 litre automatic 70 series. This time, we're gonna find out if this thing is better than before off-road. The best points, a V8 is not gonna be able to keep up with this. The worst points never will improve. Never ever beat the V8 in this situation. Even with the bars, you're still getting light in the eye. And where does it do a better job than the V8? We're gonna find out all of that right now. How does the new Land Cruiser perform on sand? Absolutely awesome. First impressions of off-road handling and comfort. Comfort is not really a term to be using with a 70 series Land Cruiser. It doesn't have IFS. It's a solid front, it's a solid rear. The trade-off of having a more rigid and robust vehicle means it is not going to be a smooth ride. At slow speeds, it's rough, it's rugged because it's quite light at the moment. However, adding a bit of weight or getting the correct tyre pressure and moving at speed, it's actually not that bad. It's just like a 70 and it's just like I expected it to be. How are we going with that? Everyone who owns a 70 series knows that they flex like a lawnmower, like a bus, like a forklift, like a shopping trolley like a brick, like a surfboard. Those are all analogies that can accurately be described when you're driving a 70 series, particularly through lumps like you're seeing right now. So wheel travel has not improved and probably never will improve, which at the end of the day doesn't matter because you've got front and rear lockers. <laughs> what is it like on the beach? It prefers high range on the beach. It loves it, even through soft sand. However, that rear wheel track is a pain. With the 70 series, they still haven't updated the rear axle to you know, be in line with the front axle. It's narrow on the rear. This GoPro footage really shows how far out the wheel track is. Overall, it's 100 mil, 50 mil each side. This also causes the rear to flick out every now and then, meaning you have to constantly correct your steering. And many people have asked me, you know, is it a an issue, why well, is it a problem? Particularly on a beach shop, right now I'm in wheel tracks, the rear wheels are pop in and pop out, pop in, pop out. It does happen to other vehicles every so often, but it's just, it's constant with this. You're always fighting it. What they have done since 2016 is they've added stability control to the vehicle as a band-aid fix in my mind. But the only true fix is to widen the axle or put a different offset of wheels so you can line up the front with the rear. That's the only true way to fix this problem. Everyone I know who don't have the rear axle sorted out all have the same issue. When you're on the firm sand, however, it's fine. You don't notice it. It's more when you're in those wheel tracks. Putting the wheel track issue aside, the automatic absolutely loves the beach and loves sitting in high range, as I mentioned already. Once we add weight to this vehicle, Will it then need to rely on low range when we hit the beaches again? Only time will tell. Being a 76 series as well, the wheelbase is really ideal for just having a bit of fun in the dunes. The power of the 2.8, it's on tap. This being my own vehicle, I upgraded my tyres so that I can run as low as 17 psi on all four corners and not have to worry about my tyres rolling off the bead, thus allowing me to push the vehicle so much more than I normally would have. Low range, this thing just eats up the sand. Epic. But let's do the fun stuff. Let's drive up the dune. We're gonna give it a bit here. This is gonna be fun and thrilling. Wow, awesome. It's not like the sand is hard either because it's summer, 27 degrees at 
9 a.m. It's gonna be a hot one today. Having such a light vehicle and so much power at the pedal, you've gotta be careful when you're cresting those dunes. There were plenty of times I had two wheels up in the air. But what about going down sand dunes? Does it roll too fast? Does it move too fast, being an auto? First gear low, going down this dune. Let's see how fast it wants to roll down. Oi, it's steeper than I thought it was. It's actually holding the speed pretty good, but it's probably the sand. I'm probably sinking in the sand a little bit. Hopefully I'm not nudging the bottom of the nose because I don't have a lift on this thing. Stock. We tried multiple dunes and each time it went down surprisingly a lot slower than expected. This is definitely going slower than a Hilux or a Prado downhill. It's probably about the same speed as a 70 series with maybe 33s on them, like a V8 one. This one we still got stock tyres on. I know it's not a heavy car at the moment, but if you put this weight for weight with a V8, this thing will eat it for breakfast on this terrain right here. And take it from someone who owns two V8s and loves them and loves dune driving, this is more fun on the dunes, I'm telling you. It's power on tap. And that's why this 2.8 litre auto will beat a V8 manual Land Cruiser every single day of the week in that particular situation. However, it will never ever beat the V8 in this situation. Now for its biggest test. How does it go down a hill where there's rocks, ruts and holes that you want to avoid and you want to go as slow as possible? Okay, look, it's not as bad as what I thought it was but it's still too fast for some of the sections coming up. Manual 70 series, the ratio of first gear low going down, not much beats that. I'm gonna be in a bit of an angle here. There we go. I'm gonna go wide, wide and high. First gear low is too fast for this because there are big, holes and big rocks around that this this lift and the size tires would not be able to climb with ease or without risking any damage oh. you really need to be on the brake wow that guy got close then so going up it's way more controlled but going down slightly less controlled they've geared it for the automatic so it still retains its sort of slow speed but it definitely faster than the manual. It's not the same ratios as the Hilux or the Prado, even though it shares the similar engine and the gearbox. But it's also not the same final diff ratio, the final drive ratio that it shares with the V8. They're slightly different, but I'm impressed with it in stock mode, 100%. I wanna put 33s on it and see how it goes. And then the big test will be the 35s and see if it can handle that. So far, what has impressed you most about the new 2.8 litre? Keeping in mind this vehicle is light and it's auto, it's an absolute breeze to climb hills. I do want to touch on the decent slow ratio. It works really well up hills for an auto. But not only that, the pedal is actually really good. It's not too doughy or too laggy, but it's also not too snappy. You'll find with a lot of automatic vehicles, the pedal feel, it's not always that great for example the hilux i had to really squeeze it and nothing 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 all of a sudden whoop there it is with this vehicle the pedal is really nice it's almost designed to drive off road that's probably the best way i can put it so this morning i forgot to call my car and see what it was wearing so we can't end up wearing the same color today <laughs> sorry dad jokes terrible driving on just gravel, corrugated, bumpy roads like this. It does feel like a farm truck, but it does absorb it quite well. It's not uncomfortable, and it just sits here and just cruises along. I am running full tire pressure at the moment. It's definitely not as comfortable as an IFS vehicle. However, the 70 can take a lot of punishment from corrugations. It's more or less the exact same drive line. The wheelbase on this is 300 mil shorter than the 79 and 150 mil shorter than the Troopy. The 79 
and the troop here. I would have to do a free point turn. Oh, just over the mountain here, why not? Ooh. Oh yeah, we can make it. Well, hang on, hang on, there's a tree there. Just made it. There you go. I think it's 12.3 meters. Strong points, weak points, and the remaining questions. Yes, it's a 2.8 litre, but how many options do you have right now? Brand new vehicle from stock with an automatic diesel option, solid front and rear axles, mechanical four wheel drive shifter, front and rear mechanical diff locks, GVM of 3.5, minimal electrics compared to the others out there, meaning less to go wrong while you're out bush. That is a really good strong point for remote travelers. Most accessories will still fit this vehicle from the windscreen back because nothing's changed in almost 40 years. The Hilux SR5, Prado, Ranger, Hilux Rogue, Fortuna, the new Defender. Comparing to all of that, this six speed 70 series automatic is the best automatic four wheel drive I have driven off road. And I'm talking off road, I'm not talking about on road. There are far better vehicles for on road driving. Everything's been pretty positive so far. Time for the weak points. The rear camera has this hazy screen. It sucks. It is so hard to see what's behind you. And you will think it will get better at night because you don't have the glare from the sun. No, it almost gets worse. That's what I'm talking about. Look how milky white that is. Reverse camera. It's just such a milky, hazy screen. I've even tried to see if they've left the, you know, that cover they put on it. You got to peel off. There's nothing on it. It's just a really screen. The spare tire on the rear kind of covers your vision on one side, but you know, that's just a wagon thing. However, I think they could have put the camera maybe at a lower point to get a better view. Particularly off-roading, it's kind of handy to have a rear camera so you're not reversing into a tree or a big ditch or a, a rock or something. Oh man. Okay, one thing I'll say, the bonnet, the bonnet sucks when you get light reflection. Can't see a goddamn thing. Even with the visor up, I'm still getting light in my eye that's one little complaint i have about the new bonnet and it looks sick but geez that light really comes in as for a low-tech vehicle it's pretty frustrating that every single time you turn the vehicle off you have to then reset all your settings i'm well, not again for example stability control in four-wheel drive high range you have to physically turn that thing off every single time and to do that you got to hold the button down it becomes a bit of a chore and can catch you out if you're out four-wheel driving. The handbrake is still an ornament. It sucks. It doesn't do anything. Thank goodness for that parking pin in the auto box. That's all I'm saying. The rear wheel track still sucks, but it also sucks on the V8. It's just a 70 series thing. You are constantly fighting it when you're on a side slope, particularly driving on beaches. Where is the 2.8 better than the V8s when it comes to off-roading? In stock form, it's better power to weight, it's better on the sand, it's better in every single aspect straight out of the box. When we start modifying these vehicles, I suspect that's where the differences are going to be revealed, highlighted. Fuel economy is also where it's much better than the V8. I'm getting 11.9 litres per 100 after thrashing the guts on sand dunes and out in the bush. The worst I've had so far is 12.5 and that was really thrashing it on the first week, just taking it off-road constantly and putting it through its paces. I'm not babying this vehicle around and it's still got decent fuel economy. Adding mods, what's gonna happen? Auto makes it so much easier to drive. It's like entering a cheat code into your V8 manual. I honestly, personally prefer stick shift and the V8, I love my V8s. However, I'll happily admit that this thing is far more superior off-road comparing stock to stock. That's what's so easy with the auto, just keeping that steady pace. And if you need to back off, well, I can just stop here for a second and then go again. I don't have to play with a clutch or anything. That's why an auto is so much easier when you're going uphill. Where is it not as good as the V8? Going downhill, you can notice that it is going faster, stock for stock. It's rolling faster downhill, but it's not as bad as what I thought and it is the best auto downhill speed 
I have driven out of all the autos that I've ever driven that have not been modified. I'm just gonna state that, that have not been modified. The ratios downhill from stock are pretty darn good when you compare it to other autos, but it doesn't beat the V8. Oh, it's good to finally have something over it. <laughs> the remaining questions when it comes to off-roading, downhill with bigger tires, downhill with more load, even more importantly, going uphill with heavier loads. It hates me to say it because I love the V8 Cruiser. This could be the reason why the V8 dinosaurs are gonna go extinct. And the more I use this vehicle, my current thoughts are confused. If someone presented me with this car and the V8 version of this, it's not a, it's not a straight up, I'll go for the V8 answer anymore. Putting an auto in this vehicle, in this, in this setup, it's, just, it's, it's incredible. I've got to say it. Now, I need to also just state here again, I have paid for this car with my own money. Actually, that's a lie. Half of the money was my wife's money. Comparing stock form from V8 manual to automatic 2.8 litre, are you surprised how well this new 70 series does? At this current point in time, I am so impressed with this vehicle. And I know there's a lot of reluctant people, and I was one of them too. And I'm not going to tell you to go out and buy this car. I'm not going to tell you to go out and buy the V8 because this vehicle here, this type of vehicle only suits the person who likes the farm truck bush vehicle, ready for off-road. But at the moment, out of the box stock, wow. However, it's not conclusive because I need to see how this thing performs on 33 inch tires. And then I want to compare it to one of my old V8s and then to see how they both behave, 35s. And I reckon that's where this may come unstuck. That's all I got to say. Thanks for watching guys.